Policing in the 21st century is a relentless battle against violence, drugs, robbery and organised crime. And it's not just our inner city cops who are in the firing line. Tonight on Brit Cops Frontline Crime. Ah, you little Crack police squads in the thick of it. Tackling drunks. Let's come back to the fail. Speed merchants. Both you and the Red Corsa were doing in excess of 100 miles an hour. And garage mayhem. Okay. I'm not, I didn't attack anyone! I didn't attack anyone! Downtown Plymouth on a busy Saturday night. Plymouth attracts millions of visitors every year, all intent on one thing, having a good time. With the party in full swing, there's always a chance that people can get carried away. And it's up to Devon and Cornwall's police officers to keep a tight lid on things. By 1am, the streets are filling and there's always the risk that one odd loose cannon can kick off. PC's Nigel Sobey and Harry Lloyd come across a group of lads who've had a little bit too much to drink, and one has had a little bit too much to say. What are you on about? What's what your language? What are you on about? What's your what language? Like that. Right? Don't what? swear on the street. Don't swear okay. on the street. It's first section five, public order warning, mate. Right. Swear again. Right. You want to come in, do yeah? you? Fuck you. Yeah, okay. Oh, next, mate. Rule one, never swear at a policeman. Well, very clever, really, was it, mate? How many opportunities did you have then to be quiet and be nice? Clever was never going to be an issue with this man. Got anything on you shouldn't have, fella? As he's getting acquainted with the cuffs, help arrives in the shape of his sister. Hey, that's my brother. Is it? Well, you know your brother's under arrest. Why? For being swearing. Swearing right? He don't mean to swear. He doesn't mean to swear. Oh, no, that's all right. Yeah, bro. Oh, bring me later, yeah? yeah. This man won't be ringing anyone. His night is well and truly over. Later that night, PC Nigel Sobey spots an incident in the doorway of a club that no longer wants the company of one man. Oh, man, fella. But this man does not want to stay calm. What's the problem? Nothing Listen, the shh. What's the problem? I don't know what the problem is. Right, calm down. Why have you been kicked out? I don't know, ask him. While PC Sobey's taking his details, PC Shergold has found out what the problem is. Yeah, he's just been an idiot, mate. Oh. How can you say I'm being an idiot? You don't even know me. That's what the door staff have said, mate. Well, don't say I'm an idiot then, innit? I don't even know you. Strangely, the man doesn't agree with what the club think of him. They're a pain in the arse all night. They've asked you to quiet down, you didn't, so they threw you out. Let me do the check and then you'll be on your way, all right? All right? Play the game, mate. The police have nothing on him, so this man is warned to go home. But will he take the warning? By the early hours, the streets of Plymouth are heaving with people intent on having a good time. But one of the main problems for the police is underage drinking. Too much booze can sometimes cause loss of memory. Like this girl, who's been refused admission to a club because they don't believe her driving licence as proof of age. What's your date of birth? The 8th. Summon 86. What's your star sign? Oh, you got any other ID on you? It seems the girl does not know when she was born, where she lives or even who she is. What's the address on your driving licence? King's been out since, like, 4 o'clock this afternoon and we don't ask for right, What I would say is that if I'm absolutely caned and someone asks me where I live, I'd still know. I really know. don't know where I live when I'm actually fucking caned. No offence, I'm not, like, trying to be, like, sarcastic or anything, but I really don't know where I live when I'm actually... With communication nearing meltdown, PC Tony Shergold then tries to shut her up. Listen, listen, listen. Just... Switch to receive. Receive, receive, right? OK. The picture doesn't look like you. Yeah, because I've had my hat and Receive. Listen. Just, just okay. don't talk, don't talk. I am actually piloting drunk. I'd bring Right, her. so go to Charles Costamara. Yeah. They finally decide to keep her licence. She can pick it up in the morning. That's if she can remember, of course. It's now 2am and PC's Nigel Sobey and Tony Shergold are called yet again to a club for someone causing a problem inside. It sounds familiar. But when he's brought out, it's the same man as before, only this time he's wearing a different shirt. 
He may have a different shirt, but he's got the same attitude. Didn't we tell you to go away? Remember? Why have you changed the shirt? Yeah. Yeah. I thought you'd go in there with Yeah, we've just yeah, seen you, a different shirt in Nugget. You You're on camera, fella, as well. Get the fuck up! Yeah, yeah! No! Ah, you little Do not risk Nuggle! You will incur an injury, mate. Do you understand that? Who's got my notebook? Right. Right. Right, mate, at this moment time, you're under arrest on suspicion of assault. You don't have to say anything to me on defence if you don't mention questions, which they are on court. Anything you do say, maybe get over. Do you understand that? Right, Robbo, on to your side. Arrested and with his hands cuffed behind him, he's still giving the PCs a verbal bashing. Right, you're, you're, you're a fucking... Stay still! Yeah. Why well, brought my trousers down? What are you doing here? Believe me, mate, I don't want your trousers well, why down. Why the fuck are you pulling them down? Castle, look at your face, you mad! With his trousers intact, he's put in the police van, all because he didn't heed the policeman's advice. We've taken him to one side, and whilst we're taking him to one side to actually ascertain the final details of what happened, he tried to walk away. Um, at that point, we laid hands on him, and then he tried to break free from our grasp, and that was the point in which I decided to take him to the ground. And then he was handcuffed, and at that point, he was arrested. Shut up, Back at the station, the man is still kicking off. Face. Oh. We have that effect. After an hour of cooling his heels in the holding cells, he's taken to the charge room, and even that doesn't suit him. Step forward. Okay, get the fuck it. Okay, you behave like that and go straight to your cell and search there. He's not happy with turning his pockets out, so other methods have to be used. He didn't want to be searched, so the custody sergeant said for him to be taken straight down to the cell, where we'd search him in the cell under force, and then withdraw from the cell with his property, and he'd then be signing for that in the morning. Follow me, sir. Coming up, the drivers who think the speed limit doesn't apply to them. So we've got two cars here doing it just in excess of 100 miles an hour. The constant fight to keep drugs off the streets. And a drink driver's evening that turns into a nightmare. Not all crimes happen at night, and with an area of over 4,000 square miles to patrol, Devon and Cornwall's police are constantly on alert. The West Country is the holiday centre of Britain, and every year thousands flock to its beaches. But to get there, they have to use the roads. Last year, there were over 7,000 accidents in which 92 people were killed. The police relentlessly seek out the bad drivers. Today, traffic cops, PCs Charlie Oliver and Steve Morris are preparing to take part in Operation Vortex in their unmarked car. Operation Vortex, a month-long operation, uh, is targeting aggressive uh, driving, speeding, or anti-social driving, and uh, people just being complacent, taking liberties with the speed limit and using mobile phones. First up, a double whammy when they clock two cars going over 100 miles an hour. So we've got two cars here doing it just in excess of 100 miles an hour. You can go alongside it, mate. Pulling both cars over onto the hard shoulder, our traffic cops decide to take a driver each. When PC Steve Morris questions the driver of the Mitsubishi, she has no idea why she's been stopped. Please be honest with me, you have no idea, speed-wise, both you and the Red Corsa were doing in excess of 100 miles an hour. Unbelievable. The woman and her young daughter are on their way to a funeral, but at that speed, who's? I sympathise, however, in your frame of mind, especially with your daughter in the car as well. Even in a good car like this with good tyres, 100 miles an hour, if you have a blowout, all going to go horribly, horribly wrong. Do you have your driving licence on you? PC Steve Morris has to use all his powers of compassion to calm this driver down. All right, OK, it's all right. Stop shaking, calm down, OK? I'm not nasty. I'm not a horrible person. At over 100 miles an hour, in Devon and Cornwall Police, they suggest that we consider sending people to court, which would mean you'd go to court and you'd lose your licence. I don't want to do that, OK? Because you know you shouldn't have been going that fast. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to issue you with a, a penal, fixed penalty ticket. Which but whatever her excuse, this driver still gets a hefty fixed penalty. In the other car is a 17-year-old driver who was not only caught at the same speed, she was also on her mobile phone, and she'd only passed her test six weeks ago. Just over 100 miles an hour, it's not acceptable, even in a decent car in good road conditions. And after getting her ticket, she's still on her phone. A little while later, yet another driver who obviously thinks that the 70 mile an hour speed limit does not apply to her. You get much closer to 100, could you? 99.92. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Reason you think we stopped this afternoon? Speeding. Absolutely, yeah. When we first put you on the machine, you was over in, in the low 90s. When I clicked you off, you was doing 103. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. It's really, really not acceptable. No. That's another fixed penalty. The day's going well. With over 13,000 miles of road to patrol, the traffic cops see every sort of bad driving. Like this man, who's been pulled over because they saw him doing his paperwork while driving his van. Without sounding sarcastic, that's a transit van, it's not an office. All right? You're not in a position to have proper control of the vehicle when you're looking down and shuffling around with paperwork, are you? No. It's not safe. And how about this driver? Whenever you're in the car, always belt up. Do you know why we've stopped you? I haven't a clue why you've stopped me. Really? Yes. You weren't wearing your seatbelt. Actually, you Oliver, seat would, you like to, would you like to find me and do whatever it is is necessary? Right, OK. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. And it's not only his attitude that can cause him harm. I presume your vehicle's fitted with an airbag? Yes, it is. Do you know what happens if you have a crash? The airbag could actually injure you worse. Than extremely good design, then, isn't it? They're, they're fine, good. Well, no, they're yeah, designed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. A yeah. Supplementary yes. <coughs> yes. Thank you very much for your time. In the month that Operation Vortex was in progress, Devon and Cornwall traffic cops issued a staggering 772 fixed penalty tickets. Criminals don't keep office hours, and for Devon and Cornwall's finest, it's a 24 7 operation fighting crime. It's 2am on Sunday night when PCs Anna Hunkin and Rob Byers get a shout-out for assistance over the radio. Yeah, we went swimming past us. Yeah, 308 were with that vehicle also. It's definitely that vehicle because it went swimming past us. It appears that this driver did not stop for another police unit. No? Do you see the two officers flagging you down? Yeah, when you're on your mobile phone? Yeah. And you drove off. Yeah, you asked to stop and you didn't. So far, it looks like he's just been pulled for not stopping and using his mobile phone. Tim. But PC Anna Hunkin has spotted something on the driver's seat. There's a bottle top on the top there, like from a beer bottle. So... Well, look, we'll turn it upside down and see what it is. She also spots something else. Bottles of alcohol in the front. It looks like this man has been having a party in his car. Two empty ones in there. So that's exactly the same make, um, obviously, the bottle top that we found in the, on the seat. All right, mate, so take a deep breath. Right. See you later. While his car is being searched, he's blowing into the tube. Let's just going to analyse your breath. All right, mate. Let's come back as a fail. It's positive. This time, mate, you're under arrest for driving whilst under the precise limit, OK? And if this man's night is not bad enough, PC Rob Byers has found what could be cocaine in his car. It's a rat with a bit of powder in. Well, is it? You might want to open in the car and the powder's going to blow off. There's only a bit there. She's going to get a portion. Is she? Across the other side of town, Sergeant Dan Ivey and PC Steve Brooks are in the Mill Bay and Stonehouse district. Oh, there you go, look. That's the condom she was using. This is the red light area of Plymouth, and these officers are part of Operation Glendale, which is clamping down on prostitutes and drug dealers. Just coming up on the left is where the, um, the known girls will, will mainly hang out. There's two of them down here, look. Then we're passing now. Sergeant Dan Ivey and PC Steve Brooks are part of a police net that has been thrown around the area and are being guided along by other units. Officers have seen a male stop and talk to several prostitutes who we think is a known Plymouth criminal, is known to the police. 
so um, they're guiding us in now to go and um, stop and speak to him and, and see where we go from there. He's down by this roundabout, I think. Suddenly they see a man who fits the description. Yeah, yeah done and I, you know your rights, but you don't know your responsibilities yet, do you? So listen to what I'm going to tell you. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. We're going to take some details down from you. You're going to be searched under the provision of Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act, and then we'll go from there, right? Despite Sergeant Dan Ivey's calm approach, the man gets very agitated. Just come over here by the police car and just put your hands down there on the, onto the bonnet and just keep them there and don't move them until I tell you, all right? What's your name? You got any sharps on you, you see? Like all police officers, they're aware that to search someone who might have sharps on him is not a safe occupation. But the sharps he dropped was a plastic tube with a nail in it. You got any more pins on you at all? You would tell me, wouldn't you, if you have, because I'm just about to put my hands in your pockets. The situation goes up a couple of notches when the suspect refuses to put his hands on the bonnet. Keep your hands on, on the bonnet, it, please. It's quite simple. Yeah. I'm going to have to put the handcuffs on you if you yeah, do, do that, that again, do all right? That, you've already, you've already yeah. taken out something sharp and thrown it on the floor. I'm not prepared to take the risk yeah, that you're going to do that again. If you, if you, if you move your hands off the bonnet, I will handcuff you. I'm yeah, seeking that, your cooperation. That, do that, do that, do that, I don't want to do that because I'm trying to get your cooperation first. Keep your hands on the bonnet. Just put them there on the bonnet, please. That one, there. Don't move them. Simple instruction, yeah? What are you carrying this round for? And. I'm killing a maniac, I just picked up the floor. Rather you weren't carrying it around. Not happy with him having a six-inch nail, they confiscate it. Right. See you later. Having searched him and found no drugs, they have to let him go. We gave him advice that if he doesn't want to get into any bother, then don't come down here. That's the moral of the story, I think. What, what do you three do for a living? Not everyone who comes into the area is a criminal. Sergeant Dan Ivey spots three lads who look like they're lost. Are you in the Navy? All three of you? This is Mill Bay, area of Plymouth, yeah? Yeah. Lots of prostitutes. You lads have got a reasonable amount of money compared to yeah. the people that hang around down here, and there have been a number of street robberies of naval personnel. They're warned to keep out of the area. It's dangerous and they look prime targets for an attack. You've got big lottery hands above your heads at the moment, identifying you as yeah. naval or personnel who are going to come to the attention of the police through being assaulted or being, or worse yeah. than that, perhaps being robbed. Later in the night, PC Steve Brooks and Sergeant Dan Ivey come across a known prostitute. We've seen what's going on this evening. Um, the legislation, as you know, will suggest that you're soliciting in this area. We've got the evidence to suggest that. Have you had any yellow tickets before? No, well, years and years ago. Right, you're going to get one now. It doesn't take very long to do it. Um, I don't know if you if you understand the legislation behind that, but basically, if you get two of those, um, two, two cautions of them, and then then you'll be in court. Um, because Stonehouse and Mill Bay are being developed, the police are trying to get the prostitutes off the streets. They do this by issuing yellow tickets, two yellows, and they're nicked. If she gets another one of those within the next 12-month period, then she'll face prosecution. And we've got the evidence for that from the officers in plain clothes and from um, the CCTV evidence, which will support um, caution for soliciting as a common prostitute. Job done. Meanwhile, for the drink driver, it's got a whole lot worse. Having blown positive in the breathalyzer and with possible drugs found in his car, he's arrested. In the holding cells, he's slowly realising what's happened. At the charge room, the arresting officer reads out the list of charges against him. Made off, then my colleagues have searched the car and they found a wrap. So he's arrested at 0238 possession of controlled drug. Can I just say, never in my life have I ever, ever taken a class saying, what should I, which they allege that I have? Okay. Do you understand why you're here? I you understand that I... Yeah. Okay, we've got an authorised detention here so we can uh, carry out a breathalyzer procedure on a bigger machine than the one that you used at the roadside. And also so we can uh, secure evidence and obtain evidence by way of questioning you. So you'd be interviewed about the allegation about okay. the drugs yeah. in the morning. That's okay. fine. Have you been in custody before? No. 
While the man is being charged, the possible drugs found in his car are being bagged as evidence. You know, the drugs that we've got here um, with the paper wrap, at some stage in the future, um, obviously the chap's going to have to um, answer for what it is and how it's in his possession. Has he already gone down? Yeah, yes. And the official alcohol reading has come through. He blew 68. A lot. Yes, it's but twice, it's twice, twice the legal, the legal limit. A good spot from the officer that was on Union Street to begin with. Um, and obviously us when he was driving down to Knott Street and the other officers when they saw him driving into Princess Street where he was located. So yeah, very good spot by all the officers. But the night was not a complete success. The suspected drug dealer who was stopped earlier and released had given a false address. Coming up, how fingertip searchers help capture the criminals the crime that shocked a community. And the real CSI gets forensic. Drains are my favourite. In today's fight against crime, it's not all about kicking doors down and arresting criminals. Behind every successful conviction are hours of methodical police work and painstaking searches. Sunday, 10 a.m. in the Stonehouse area of Plymouth, an officers from D section of Devon and Cornwall's police tactical aid group are searching for clues to a vicious assault that took place the previous night. Two men, one aged 30 and the other 60, were attacked and robbed of their wallets and mobiles. But luckily for the police, the whole incident was captured on CCTV. Okay. Team leader Sergeant Andy Thompson gives the briefing. Offenders came that way, victims came that way, they met at this post, one offender's gone past them, and the second offender's gone on the outside of them, on, on this inside, mm. and, and basically, as they've gone past, it's just given a massive left hook because he's gone, there's no way to avoid it out of the blue, and then he's just gone slap back to the street. As with every police search, it has to be done methodically. Desection cordon off the area where the assault took place and soon find a bloody rag where one man was beaten. Everything is picked up in case it's vital evidence. Nothing is overlooked. Even cigarette butts are taken for potential DNA. At the moment, I've got my team doing uh, crime scene searching. We've done a, a very finite fingertip search of the uh, inner scene, which is a small area where the offence actually took place. And we're now doing uh, more open line searches of the uh, more general area, the outer cordoned area, uh, to see if there's anything being uh, dropped or discarded by either the offenders or the victims. During the expanded line search, police spot a credit card in a drain. It could be vital, it could be nothing, but it has to be checked out. It's reasonably fresh because it's laying still on top of the mud. It's not completely uh, full of water, so it's quite thick sludge. Straight back, Tommy, I mean, look at that. So it's time to roll up the sleeves and get down there. Mm. Yeah, this on the 25th. This... It's not flat. We've, uh, we've actually retrieved the card. It's been listed as stolen property. So what we're doing, we're going to take it back, place it in an evidence pack, and possibly get forensics off the card. So that's quite a good result at the end of the day. The search has taken six hours, and although nothing significant has been found, D-Section is happy they've left no stone unturned. But with CCTV footage providing a clear image of the incident, two men have been arrested and charged with the crime. It's early Wednesday morning and Sergeant Dan Ivey and his team from C-section of the tactical policing team are on their way to do house-to-house -house calls for outstanding arrests. It's called Operation Endurance and the aim of it is to arrest suspects and offenders for various different incidents and crimes that have occurred in Plymouth. Um, and the majority of those that we have today are for uh, public order or uh, offences involved in violence. First up is the home of a potentially violent person accused of a hate crime. He doesn't live at this address, but a dog does. What number did she say? Try number I tell you what, I saw that bloody dog coming around the corner. They should have gone a few doors down the street. As they approach the new address they've been given, Sergeant Dan Ivey uses the power of rank. You can go around there this time in case another bloody dog oh, comes no. 
This time, no accused and no dog. Further down the road, a woman calls them saying that she has a phone call from the man they want to arrest. So who, who are you speaking to there? Right. It's the police. We need, to, we need to come and speak to you about something. Could you just let me know where you are so that we can come and speak to you and not bang on everybody's door apart from yours, it would seem. Right, OK, how long, how long will it take you to get there? Right, I do. All right, mate, we'll see you in a minute. Brilliant, thanks a lot for your help with that, all right? Appreciate that. Sergeant Dan Ivey arranges to meet the man outside of Bookies in town. He was initially um, a bit abusive to me down the phone, but when I managed to convince him that it was in his best interest to speak to us, he's decided that he's going to meet us in 10 minutes outside of Bookies in town. True to his word, the man is waiting where he said he would be. For Sergeant Dan Ivey and his team, this has been a result. In another part of town, D-Section Tactical Aid have been called in to search a disused reservoir for a shotgun used in a local robbery. Their job is to look for the gun and any jewellery the suspect may have thrown away. We're hoping it's all contained in the bag because there's more chance they're likely to, to find that. If it's down to individual pieces of jewellery, we're obviously going to reassess our search plan. It's dirty and potentially dangerous work as the disused reservoir is clogged with weeds and visibility is bad. And you get all up, you can barely move. No one said it's going to be easy. As the day wears on, it's becoming obvious that this is a needle in a weed stack problem. Well, the is that weed's so thick, it's difficult. So until they can clear the weeds, this search will have to wait. Sergeant Dan Ivey's tactical policing team are on their way to the next call. You're going to love this. This is like Brit the Britain's Got Talent of Plymouth's criminal fraternity. It appears that the man has been accused of stealing 40 paving slabs and a disc cutter from his workplace. Intelligence received by the police says that the suspect has recently laid a patio at his home address. <laughs> Once again, there is a dog, and once again, no one is home for Sergeant Dan Ivey and his team. But suddenly, his wife turns up. Hiya, all right? It seems that the man is at work, and she offers to bring him to the station rather than embarrass him on the job. What about if you pick him up and take the child across? Yeah, that's that fine. Be yeah, I'll go and get him um, That'll be better. Yeah. Back at the station, the man's wife has brought him in. Arrested, he's taken away to find out what happened to those missing paving slabs. And then just ask at the front office and they'll give you a seat here. Another happy customer. A section of the tactical policing team are on their way to search a house for evidence in a case that has shocked the community. Thieves have stolen three bronze plaques from the War Memorial on Plymouth Hoe. It's a crime that has also shocked the officers who are about to conduct the search. I think it's very high profile public wise. Um, it's in the papers and you know, there's a lot of bad feeling about this. You know, it certainly hits a nerve with, uh, with a lot of ex-services and currently serving uh, uh, service people. So, yeah, we want to resolve this as soon as possible. Some of the plaques, although cut up, have been recovered. Acting on information, a section decide to raid a house. The police have no problem entering as CID has got hold of the keys. While two men's details are being taken, a section split into teams and start to search. First up are some power tools that the police are suspicious of. And these are brand new. In my opinion, they could be stolen. So uh, we have the power to take these and uh, some investigation on them. But obviously, yeah, they might have been used as well to cut the plaques up. Another team has found a batch of receipts. First item I've located is a receipt from a scrap metal company. Um, this scrap metal company is where the, uh, the plaques were found. Um, obviously, it ties in this gentleman to that um, scrap metal company. Uh, second item is a 
purchase agreement for um, it's for an angle grinder, disc cutter, and a spanner. And I'll see uh, these items maybe have uh, may have been hired to cut up the plaque. While the two men in the flat wait, officers from A section assemble all the evidence. The two men are arrested and taken away. Following the search, um, we have retrieved a number of power tools and electrical items which could possibly have been used in the theft. Um, we currently have two people in custody. They're going to be uh, they're waiting to be interviewed now by CID, and then any of the power tools will be sent off for a forensic examination so we can link it to the crime. Not all searchers have glamour or excitement. Sometimes they're up to their eyes in you-know-what. But it has to be done, and PC's Tony Shergold and Johnny Adkins from Devon and Cornwall's D section are the men to do it. At the moment, there's a, uh, a missing person inquiry, and there's two lines of inquiry. The person's either come to a sticky end or he's missing. As a result of that, he, he was um, seen in this area. It was the last known place he was. The area's already been searched by um, other officers and we've been tasked today to search the remainder of it which includes about six drains. At this time we're looking for any evidence relating to any incident or to the person himself. Searching drains is not a nice job but it's a specific speciality of D-section. Drains are my favourite. No, it's quite clean. These are all storm drains so all they've got really is water muck and dirt. With five drains to search that might give a clue to the missing person's whereabouts, it's going to be a long, messy day. Because uh, the incident happened a while ago, we don't know exactly what the drain level is. Basically, what we do is clear it of all, get the water out, get all the leaves out and everything, so it can at least be properly searched. We don't know what we're really looking for. It could be anything very small items, credit cards, or indeed if it's uh, a murder weapon. It has to be done properly, and that means getting your hands in it. They've dredged up a purse, but it has no ID, so it will be sent to forensics to see if they can find anything. Throughout the day, they continue their search of the five drains. It's a good get out for the criminal to dispose of their property, perhaps in a panic. You know, not all the time do they want to go and retrieve the item that they're, they're getting rid of. Sometimes they, they want it got rid of and no one else to find it, and obviously this is a prime spot. Although nothing has turned up, our officers from the drains can cross the area off the list and go back to base. Some people within the police service, I mean, that would be a job that they just would not want to do but then they do lots of jobs that we wouldn't want to do. So it is horses for courses, really. We're strange, but sometimes we think they're strange. <laughs> it's a busy Saturday morning, and PC's Anna Hunkin and Rob Byers are patrolling in the rapid response car when they get a shout. We're currently looking for a missing person from a residential home. He's 84 years old. Um, obviously due to the weather and his age, um, we've got all the units in Plymouth looking for him at this time. With the weather worsening, concern is growing for his safety. But they've had a call that he might have been spotted in a newsagent. The CCTV cameras um, in the city centre um, spotted a guy matching a similar description going into a spa shop um, on the Royal Parade. So we're going to go down and uh, just see whether it's all missing person. Hello, chap. What's your name? Oh, I'm Adam. Basically, we've got a missing person out at the moment. You're matching his description, so we just, to... just need to have a chat and just uh, see if you're the chap. It turns out to be a false alarm. It's the wrong person. But they have another call that someone matching his description has been found on the university campus. Let's hope it's him. When PC's Anna Hunkin and Rob Byers arrive, another unit is already there, and it is the missing man. He's fine and well, and just a little confused as to his whereabouts. Hello. That's it, and even a good-looking police officer. Yeah, well, great, right? <laughs> especially that one, up there. <laughs> 
The elderly man is being given a lift back to his house, and for PC Anna Hunkin, it's a great result. Excellent result. Mm, very good result. Mm. Coming up... Does not miss love to prove! The music festival that rocks a town. Get over here. Calm yourself down. And a man who's really not happy with the repairs on his car. I didn't attack anyone. I didn't attack anyone. No, I didn't attack anyone. It's the weekend and C-section of Devon and Cornwall's Tactical Aid Group are on patrol at the Music Festival in Dartmouth. Usually the reserve of middle-class holidaymakers, once a year the town is invaded by teenagers. The main problems for the police are underage drinking and smoking cannabis. We're talking about 13, 14-year-olds who, for some reason, their parents let them come out, let them drink, let them get drunk, they congregate in big gangs. And to be fair, they're, they're having fun. They're being silly, they're playing silly games like 13, 14-year-olds do. However, when, when alcohol's on board as well, we turn up and they're a little bit more cheeky than they would be without the drink. The biggest problem the police have is stopping the kids from getting the booze. Many are too young to buy it and rely on older friends to get it for them. How old are you, my love? I'm 16. Hey, why are you drinking? I've just seen you put a bottle back there. Who's is this box here? This mine. Is it, how old are you? I'm 19. Please. OK. Listen, mate. Keep I'm, no, I'm going to seize this from you, OK? Because you, uh, underage people are drinking your beer and we're not having it, OK? Can you just take this? Don't get involved, guys. Just don't get involved, all right? I don't hear anyone shouting anything. Just don't get involved. <laughs> You're going to bring a crate of beer out. You're going to have to be careful who's drinking it, aren't you? The man is cautioned and his stash of booze is taken from him. Basically because he's supplying to an underage female, I've seized them from him. There'll be a Dartmouth police station. Hopefully he won't be able to give any more drinks out to anyone tonight. But for the police, it's just one big cat and mouse game to try and keep ahead of the teenagers who want to drink. Once we've caught them once, they're, they're ready for us, and every time we come back now, I think um, there'll be little spotters out looking for us approaching, and the beer gets hidden away. So it's very rare we'll get another stash of bottles like we did before. And even when these underage drinkers do get caught, they can't see what they're doing wrong. With her name in the book and her booze taken from her, this girl is not happy. <laughs> to see how, how cheesed off she looked, as if we're sort of putting her out, and, and you know, in the end, if she drank all of that, what state is she going to be? A 16-year-old girl. You know, she's mixing it with this. She'll be blind drunk in a couple of hours, causing us more problems, won't she? I'd imagine this uh, liquor store's going to be quite full by the end of the night, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? It's Saturday morning in the south-central area of Plymouth. PT John Kerridge-Smith, known to his mates as Kermit, is called by other officers to an incident at a garage. Um, going to an aggressive male who's refusing to uh, leave, being aggressive towards staff and um, threatening them. A row has got out of hand because a customer refuses to pay for repairs on a car he brought to his local garage. PT John Kerridge Smith has to try and sort out who said what and who threatened who. That's an issue for him to take up with the solicitor should he want to do that. Yeah. PT Kerridge Smith has to put a bit of common sense on this and suggests, as it's a civil matter, if the owner doesn't like the customer, don't serve him. He's been given strong words of advice now about his behaviour. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that this can't continue and he can't do that and he's being told the consequences of, of his actions should he continue in in his manner which is not exactly um, the best course of action for him to take. But the other man still feels aggrieved and is in danger of getting nicked. I, I'm not attacking you. I did not attack you. Okay. I'm not, I didn't attack anyone. No, I didn't attack, attack anyone. anyone. I didn't attack okay. anyone. You okay. said I'm attacking people. Listen, no, listen. No, listen. Do, I, do I did that to listen. you? Listen, you said me before. You said me You killed me. You killed me. You're lying. You're lying. Listen, I'll ask you one. It's really not worth the hassle. Just let him be. 
With the man in his car, he's given one final piece of advice and told to go on his way. Like I said, at the moment, this is not the time to discuss. But I want my car, no second hand, new. Well, that's, 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 that's OK, well, that's your, that's your, that's up to you, isn't it? That's up to you. OK? OK, thank you very much. Thank you. It could have turned nasty, but common sense and good policing came through. Right, cheers for that, mate. The gentleman that, that you saw me speaking to basically wanted, said, I'll fit your brand new clutch then if um, you go and buy it. He wasn't happy with that, so he's basically just um, been effing and blinding at him. As you see, he's made threats like that. They don't perceive him to be real. Uh, and they've all just been offered words of advice, really, about um, the, civil, the civil matter about the car and just about his behaviour, really. So hopefully that'll be the end of that. Hopefully. It's now Saturday night and the Dartmouth Music Festival is racking up the energy levels. Despite the weather, thousands have flocked to hear the music, to dance and to drink. As the night gets into top gear, drink levels are fueling excitement and aggression. Tactical aid group C-section are at full stretch to contain the crowds. They've arrived just in time. Two men have just started a fight, and it's up to PC Simon Boobia to sort it out. Right. He starts on me whenever I see him. Right. Just threatening to get his brothers on me, the sign the other. It seems like a case of handbag throwing, and PC Boobia swiftly diffuses the situation. Can I have a suggestion? Why don't you? Why don't you move on to another pub and then you won't have a problem here? If you see him again, you be the adult and you move on. It will save you getting in trouble. Let's have a good night, stay out of trouble. If you see this other chap, walk away. With the sting taken out of the arguments, everyone seems happy. So uh, it was all calmed down now and the other lad's gone on his way and words of advice and everyone's happy. Uh, no further problems and as you can hear, it's all calm in there. Around the corner, Sergeant Tony Willis and PC Vicky Howell are involved in a shooting incident. Luckily, it's with a group of camera-happy tourists. Hurry up! <laughs> we like men in uniforms, all right. All right, uh, The Dartmouth Music Festival is finally grinding down. As the pubs begin to empty and the task of clearing up begins, C-Section's Sergeant Tony Willis and PC Vicky Howell can reflect on the night's action. From our point of view, everyone's made their way away from the area quite quickly once the final band is finished because of the rain, which, which, which helps us. It's the same old story with the kids, though. It's, you know, every, every time we come to these events, it's always the kids and it's always the alcohol that causes the most problems. That is social behaviour, basically. It's trying to get a balance between letting the kids do what they want to do but stopping them from crossing the line, basically. Coming up on Brit Cops Frontline Crime, the police action series exclusive to Bravo. In Wales, raids, violent arrests and high-speed chasers. Devon and Cornwall's specialist units take on vice... How much is she charging you? ..and the cruel sea. And in London, the Met tackle armed criminals and drug dealers. Large bag of cannabis. Bravo's cameras capture all the action as these cops catch the criminals. Right, you're next. <laughs> 